Alright, XCOM, Terror from the Deep. It's actually the second game of the series. Uh, the first game, if you've played the first game, it's effectively the same game. I should have included this in the last video. Uh, if you've played the uh, this first game, UFO Defense, then go ahead and skip this video, too. Sorry to bring you here, just to tell you that. But, um, it's the same game, effectively. They just added more. This is more just like an expansion upon. But, uh, yeah, so that's out of the way. Alright, first things first, XCOM, you are an organization, an anti-alien organization. Aliens in the first game were attacking, thought you got rid of them. Um, the cinematic there kind of spoiled it, and I'll say it again, so spoiler alert! Aliens were on Mars. Um, you destroyed them, kind of, but they beamed down to the ocean, so, uh, end spoiler. They're in the ocean now, and we're trying to find them and eliminate them. And everybody banded together and created this organization called XCOM because no single territory could handle the alien threat on its own. So the entire world, the United Nations of sorts, kind of banded together and formed XCOM, which is what you are in charge of. And uh, the year is 2040. Um, pretty much disregard that because, yeah... It's not very accurate, like, the weapons we start off with are pretty horrible for the year 2040, but we'll get to that later. First things first, we're a new organization, we gotta find a spot for a base. We can't do it on land, it has to be in water, because this whole game is based on water. We are uh, an underwater facility that we're building, so I'm gonna go ahead and build it. Just This is just for, like, demonstration purposes, wherever I build it, it doesn't really matter, so... We'll just build it just north of China here. Um, testing, yay! Okay, testing. So there's our little base there, that little blue square blip there. And since we built the base, the game has officially begun, as you can see by this timer here. I'll uh, I'll explain this later on because advancing time quickly is going to make things happen. So I'm just going to run down the list here. Uh, intercept. I'll actually do that later. Bases. These are all the bases here. These I haven't built yet. Usually you'd build those in later months in the game. But this is our first base here. We're in the South China Sea. This is how much money we have. That's the base's name. The subpens here are these three big things in the corners. They uh, they house they house ships, effectively. Uh, we start the game off with what's called barracudas. We got two of them. Those are the attack ships. They do not hold troops. They just uh, they go out and seek and destroy type stuff. The troop carrier is this one. It's called the Triton. Uh, it does not have any guns on it, so it's just like a cargo ship that houses troops and equipment for the mission. Generally when you find a USO, an unident unidentified submersible object I think it is, it's a UFO but underwater, um, you'd send out a Barracuda, shoot it down, and then you would send the Triton and uh, take it out. The entrance and exit to our base is the airlock here. Doesn't really matter for now until our base gets attacked. and. Um, I'll briefly explain that when I'm actually playing the game. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. Got living quarters here that house units. Uh, standard sonar to help us find USOs. General stores to hold stuff. Laboratory and workshop. Labs are used to research new technologies. We start the game with pretty bare bones stuff. We started with harpoon guns actually. That's our first weapon. Um, gauze technology is available to us. Kind of works, as far as I know, it works kind of like Maglev does. Um, using, uh, kind of like rail guns, I guess. Using, uh, magnets to propel projectiles. Uh, kind of cool stuff. Not the best in the game, by far. It's actually kind of, kind of crappy still. Um, alien tech, though. Now that's good. And we need labs and we need scientists to research that. So then we can manufacture it in our workshops. Technicians are housed in the workshops. The more of those guys we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the more technicians we have, the faster we can make more alien tech. So those are always good to have. As far as other facilities go, we've got, we did the wide array sonar. Same thing as a standard sonar, but it's got a larger range to it. Torpedo defenses help us when our base is under attack. Our torpedo defenses will take a few pot shots. 
uh, pot shots at the enemy USO. So, you know, maybe we can down it before it gets to us. Uh, fat chance, but eh, it can help. Alien containment, we need that so we can house live aliens. So we can do research on them and try to find out what they know. And sub pens again are these big things in the corners that house ships. Generally, I don't really need more sub pens than this. Anything more than this is a little ridiculous and takes up a good portion of our available space because it's all grid based here. Like if I were to build a laboratory, I gotta find a grid spot to put it on. And uh, space is kind of short. Um, so that's that. Uh, base information, just a quick run through. Aquanauts are our soldiers, techs and scientists. We don't really have much space for them at all. Uh, 50 spaces each. So, you know, we can pick up like 40 more scientists, 40 more techs. That'd be 80 more living space, though. So we would need to build another living quarters to do that because we're already about halfway maxed out on the living quarters. Uh, stores were more than half. We're actually getting pretty full up on storage at the very start of the game. So generally, I would need to build another storage facility for that. Uh, which, if I actually do that, I'll show you real quick. Let's say I needed more general stores. It takes 10 days for that to be built, so it's not instant, so you kind of got to plan ahead a little bit. It's a pain in the ass when you forget that, crap, I don't have alien containment, for example, so I don't have enough room for live aliens, and let's say I just did a mission and I knocked out all the aliens, they're all unconscious, we load them up on the ship, we head home, but we have no alien containment, so they all die. It is awful when that happens. I've had that happen to me a few times, and it sucks. Because there's nothing you can do then. So you got to plan ahead. Generally, you'd want to build the alien containment right away. It takes 18 uh, days. So usually you're not going to have live aliens until the end of the first month, or the start of the second month. Uh, research again. This is the research screen. We'll go ahead and start a new project. At the very start, there's really not that much to research. It's the year 2040. I guess everything, everything in the world's already been researched except, um, except gauze. And apparently harpoons are fucking amazing. So there's that. We'll just go ahead and start up on gauze technology. Get all ten scientists huddled around working on that. Progress is good. They feel they're doing okay. It may take like a week or so in game to figure out what gauze technology is. Once we do gauze technology, it'll open up other research paths. Um, gauze pistols, the ammo, gauze rifles, uh, gauze cannons, gauze defenses, all stuff like that. It branches out into a true research tree, which is really neat. Manufacture works kind of the same way. New production. If I had gauze weaponry, I could be able to select that and put these guys on it. It costs money to make things. It takes time to make things. So it's it's kind of a pain in the ass to micromanage that, but... Later on in the game, money barely becomes an issue, and you can just kind of build whatever you want, whenever you want. Uh, transfer is useful for multiple bases. I only have one base. Uh, generally, I don't have many bases in my playthroughs, so we'll see what I do with that. Purchase and recruit, simple shop screen. This is where I hire more people, uh, hire more equipment. When well, I hire more equipment, I buy more equipment. Because uh, the very, very basic stuff, the stuff we start with, the harpoon guns, uh, gas-powered things, uh, the ammo for those, uh, light grenades, stuff like that, it's very basic. It's not very good. This is technology that's already been developed in-game. It's just kind of given to me. So, for some reason, rather than manufacturing it myself... I buy them from a third party, apparently, and they send it in. Again, this takes time for things to arrive to base. So if I were to purchase, uh, let's go with 10 Aquanauts. Uh, those are the soldiers again. I don't have those 10 Aquanauts yet. I need to wait a few days for them to get to me. Uh, cell sack works kind of the same way. This is the stuff that I've got in my general stores. I'd sell them for money. It sells immediately. So that's good. You're not like waiting around to find a buyer. Thank God. That'd be awful. It's like, I need money now, but I need to sell this and hopefully I can get a decent buyer so I can get money. That'd be horrible. So selling is instant. <clears throat> 
So that's all those. Geoscape brings me back to that world screen. I'll be using that button in just a moment here. Uh, equipping submarine, that is for equipping the Triton and Barracudas. Barracudas again are the ones with weapons. It's currently, currently equipped with Ajax torpedoes and gas cannon. It shoots gas rounds and uh, torpedoes. I can sub the Ajax for another weapon if I want, but I'm just going to leave it as this for now. We'll just, why not? Uh, Barracuda 2 is the same one, I believe. Um, Triton, this is the one that holds our crew. Our crew, this is our list of soldiers. And this is the equipment. The left column is what we have in storage. The right column is what we have on the ship. So space used eight, that means I've got eight soldiers on board, so I, would want, I want to make sure that I have at least eight weapons and enough ammo for those weapons for those soldiers. Now while that may sound like a pain in the ass and kind of silly, eventually if I've got like a full Triton of 14 people, that's 14 guns, uh, I'd like to have an extra clip, so that's 28 clips, uh, med kits, grenades, stuff like that. That takes up a lot of space on the ship, and the, the ship itself actually has uh, up to 80 items. That's just, that's as many items as I can have on ship at once. So when you're dealing with a large ship, you kind of got to play it smart. And uh, sometimes you can't have an ideal loadout for every single soldier. Some guys are just going to be walking out there with a pistol with one clip. Base information I went over. Build new base. We'll just, uh, it brings me back to the building new base type thing. I'm just going to cancel because I don't need that. And that's that screen. So let's head back to the Geoscape here. Um, the time, it was what? 10 days for general stores? Yeah, 10 days for general stores. I ordered some soldiers. They should be here uh, eventually. Let's just speed this up by an hour. Um, the research is completed on the Gauss technology. We can now research the Gauss pistol. So let's go ahead and allocate research and select the Gauss pistol. Get those same 10 dudes on there because that's as many guys as I've got. Progress unknown. They don't really know what's going on yet. It'll take a little while for them to get uh, used to it. And there's our soldiers. Let's go ahead and put it back to 5 seconds and check them out. And I'll show you the soldier screen now. These are the guys that are equipped to the Triton. And down here, these are our 10 new soldiers. Uh, they're all automatically named. I can rename them if I want. I can rename them to whatever I want. Uh, they've got ranks based on kills and how many missions they've been on and how many soldiers you have in your army. Uh, they can rank up. And when they rank up, they get stat increases. Stat increases are chosen based on how they performed. And I'll run through this in just a moment. Actually, no, I'll just run through it now. Time units. Time units is used in game during a, during a mission. The game is turn based, and it's one of those where um, kind of what can I could what can I compare it to? Well, it's kind of like XCOM UFO Defense, but if you haven't played this game and you're watching this far, then you haven't played UFO Defense either. Uh, I guess like Civilization or maybe Heroes of Might and Magic where some units can move further than others. That's kind of what time units are. Every action you do in the mission costs time units, whether it be moving, turning, opening a door, moving your inventory around, throwing a weapon, reloading, shooting. Stuff like that all costs time units. The more time units you have, the more of it you can do. Although things like shooting is percentage based, so you can't have a dude with like 5,000 time units shooting a million times. Um, it's percentage based for shooting, so you'll usually only be able to shoot like two or three times per turn. Stamina kind of works the same way. That's more for carry weight to prevent you from having a dude just holding millions of things. That ties in a lot with strength, which is just how far you can throw things and how much you can hold before your stamina drains. Health is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, reactions during the alien's turn if your soldier sees an alien like move across like a doorway or something like that or move by a window if your soldier's reaction speed is high enough you'll actually and assuming he has enough time units you'll actually try to shoot at the alien during the alien's turn without you telling him to do so so it's really nice because during the alien's turn you can still kill the aliens just automatically that's based on reactions and time units. 
However, this works for the aliens too. If they see you move, they can shoot at you. It's difficult. You'll you'll see it uh, in game a lot. It's kind of the kind of the killing factor. It's what really gives the game its difficulty because you go around a corner and oh my god, there's an alien there, and it's got enough time units and enough reaction speed that it shoots your soldier immediately. So you step out around a corner and bam, you're shot and you're dead. It's like oh my god. You'll see it. Firing accuracy is self-explanatory. Throwing accuracy is self-explanatory. Um, bravery, I skipped over that because I want to go over that last. During the mission, if you've got... Think about it, like, realistically. You're a bunch of rookies out there. Like, your first mission. People around you are dropping dead left and right. You're going to freak out a little bit. The lower your bravery is, the higher chance there is of you panicking, dropping your weapons, uh, going berserk, just unloading clips on anything, even your own guys. You're just completely mental. Sometimes they'll just drop their equipment and just run off into the distance, and next turn they'll have no time units, so you got away from them to, to gather their senses. It's a pain. Especially at the start of the game, it's such a pain in the ass. But after a while, you start getting high-ranking soldiers, and if you get a really high-ranked guy in your squad, when rookies die left and right, it doesn't really matter very much because you've got that high-ranking officer there to, I guess, kind of keep things calm, keep things under control. But uh, if that high-ranking officer dies, you better bet your ass every rookie is fucking going berserk and panicking. Uh, if your high-ranking officer dies, it's... It's very difficult to recover from that. I'm sure you'll uh, you'll get to see me experience some good panics and berserks. But that runs through the uh, the Aquanauts and their listing there. Let's go ahead and see if I can't uh, can't get a ship discovered. Go ahead and go by day. Here we go. Our sonar has picked up a small sub. Uh, it's airborne, heading northeast at that speed. 1400 miles per hour maybe I don't I don't know that's really fast underwater I don't know. so let's go ahead and we'll intercept it again with the barracudas they're the ones to shoot things down go ahead and zoom in a little bit there Oop. it turned into a green cross there at the last second um, it actually landed so right now I could send my Triton and go ahead and go after it since it's landed but I kind of want to show you the fight screen, so I'm going to wait. It's very advantageous to... Oh, we lost it. It took off Barracuda, couldn't get it, and we lost it. Let's go to its last known position, see if you can find it. It's low on fuel. Damn it, we missed it. It's very advantageous to take advantage. That's kind of redundant, but I'm going with it anyway. It's a good thing to go after a alien sub that lands on its own. General, general store's finished up, that's good. A landed ship has the most spoils and loot in it. The more alien technology in there. Uh, ZR Byte, there's another touchdown one. ZR Byte, which is kind of used as a popular fuel for alien tech. I'd really like to show you the fight screen. Come on, take off again, motherfucker. Seriously? Okay, five seconds. Get that other barracuda out there. Probably gonna lose it, aren't you? Yeah, that's that's gone. I don't think he's gonna be able to find it again. Let's head north. Let's see if we can find it. No, not a chance. It's difficult at the beginning because you've got really crappy subs, and uh, the aliens are so fast they can outrun you. Research completed. I don't really care. I don't really care. I don't care. Uh, actually, I do kind of care about that. I'll show you the manufacturing process real quick. Go ahead and select the Gauss pistols. Uh, it takes a bit of workspace to do, and it costs money per unit because we actually got to find the materials. So they get 10 dudes working on two guns, and it'll take about two and a half days to do it. It'll cost 16000 to do it. You can see our workspace available is down a little bit, so if you... If you're working on like a really big project, like another ship or something that you're actually constructing, it takes up a lot of workspace. So you actually need to have multiple workshops throughout your base to be able to house all the parts so you can build it. 
the month is about halfway over and we haven't found well we haven't intercepted anything the game is based in months every month there is I'd really like to just show you the battle screen at the end of every month it's kind of like a progress report and everybody grades you because everybody's dumping money into you there we go okay I'll pause the video and show you what this is all about but um, for now let's just aggressive attack it's time based so I, I had to pause it there and explain this is what the ship looks like basically doesn't really matter just uh, try to down it. It's escaping. Nice. And the missile, the very last second, nicked it and got it down. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and wait until it's daytime before I intercept this buddy. Or uh, this ship, I guess. Not really my buddy, is it? Because it does matter. A lot. Aliens can see you much better than you can see them. So I'll go ahead, I'll fly in here, and I'll show you what it's all about within... Uh, within combat and uh, probably I'll probably die but this is just to show you this is the loadout screen you can select uh, individual inventory good deal ammo grenades stuff like that that's where that's all orchestrated okay I'll run through the buttons real quick here. This is how you enter, and this is how you take off the ship and abort the mission. If uh, nobody's left in the ship, you're pretty much saying, um, game over, man, game over. You're abandoning all your guys. You're going to lose the ship because nobody's there to pilot it. It's a pain in the ass. And you got to buy it. You got to buy a new Triton. You got to replace the soldiers. You got to replace all the equipment you lost. Losing a mission is difficult stuff this button I never use it shows you the roof uh, this is your option screen glorious glorious options um, it's basically the speed at which everything goes boy the days back before graphics options eh? that's also where you save the game I don't really save in the middle of combat um, I'll go over that in the next video when I actually start officially playing um, this button here scrolls through your units, and this button says, I'm done with this unit, move on to the next. So when you do that with all of your units, I can click it, and it won't bring me to anybody because everybody's turn I've labeled as done. So I use this button just to make sure everybody's moved, really. Because uh, I don't want anybody to just stand there for a turn and do nothing, generally. This button centers the screen. Let's say I'm like looking at something over here, and I forgot where I left my soldier. I could just center the camera right back on them. This opens up their inventory and allows you to see everything that's on the ground underneath them. So if you got a dead soldier and you want to grab his equipment, this is the screen you do it in. This button is the map. Nice overhead view. I don't really use it very often, but you can scroll through the floors. And, uh... Hmm, I think that's the alien sub there. I don't know why I can see it like that, but... Okay. No, okay, that's not the alien sub. That's just part of the environment. This button allows your soldier to kneel and stand. Kneeling improves accuracy and kind of allows you to take cover behind stuff. It costs time units to kneel and it costs time units to stand. So if you end a turn kneeling, the beginning of your turn before you move, you got to stand. So it takes more time units away to do that. Um, this button allows you to go up and down floors. And this button actually moves your soldier up and down floors. But it's the year 2040. We don't know how to swim. So we can't really use this button yet. We need special armor and equipment to help us uh, fly underwater. This is the time unit reservation area. This arrow just indicates that I don't want any time units reserved for anything. This is, uh, I want to reserve time units for snapshots, which is, as you can see here, aim shot, very accurate, costs a lot of time units. Snapshot, kind of just hip fire. Low accuracy, but it's cheap to do. I can throw my weapon also. Reserve units for a time shot, uh, or I'm sorry, a snapshot. I'll just, let's pretend I'm moving around. I can't do anything right now. Well, if I really want to, I can just keep clicking and it'll eventually let me. But ordinarily, let's just quickly 
Timing is reserved for snapshot. Says it on there. It prevents me from from doing anything else unless, of course, I continuously click. Apparently, that'll eventually break it. I don't know. Maybe that was just some weird bug there. But I can't do anything with the soldier except shoot because I've got timing as reserved. Actually, I don't think I can even shoot. No, I can't do anything. This is strictly just so you always have time minutes for reaction fire, is what it is. Uh, if I want to free it up, I can just click the arrow again and I can do whatever I want. And that, I believe, I don't know what it does. It doesn't seem to do anything for me right now. I don't think I've ever used this button before in my life. This, uh, this is just a quick rundown of their, their vitals, so to speak. Sometimes they'll get shot and they'll have fatal wounds. If I can have anywhere from one to four fatal wounds, and my health will drain based on that amount. So if I have four fatal wounds, every turn my health is going to drop by four. Uh, generally, fatal wounds mean death unless you have good enough equipment to prevent that. So let's just go ahead and uh, get some soldiers out there, see if we can find an alien. So I'm going to show you the game's epic, epic combat. The game doesn't look like much, but do give it a shot. It's uh, it's really good. It's kind of fun to watch because it's, you never know when I'm just going to get hit by a grenade. I don't know. I'll go ahead and end my turn now. Hidden movement. Aliens are doing things. Nobody sees anything. Let's skip to the next soldier. No, I thought I'd just go ahead and end my turn early. Screen flash there, it does that sometimes to kind of give you a hint at where they are. It's just black screen, and I heard an alien door opening. So, uh, wherever this guy is, he's definitely moving around in his ship somewhere. There's the ship, okay. I'm doing a very stupid thing in having this guy move out on his own. If he sees an alien and he can't do anything about it, he's SOL. Because that alien's probably going to do... Oh, oh, there's whatever I want. The guy I renamed. Found him. Oop. Yeah, he's like right there. Go ahead and move this soldier into position, sort of. While I wait for other people to get over here. Yeah, he's definitely in there. Go ahead and crouch there. An alien around the corner, there's a chance that. Whoop! Right there, that was an alien reaction fire. He's shooting at, uh, at whatever I want because he can see him. There we are, we turned. There's the alien. The flashing one indicates that I see one alien. He's right there. I only have 15 time units. I can't really do anything except throw my gun at him. But I don't really want to do that, so let's move out of the line of fire. Because if I end my turn there, that alien is just going to keep shooting at him. Okay, he moved up. He's definitely in there. Gonna move Martin in here. This is risky. That alien's turned this way and he's looking. Ooh, there's another one. Ah, alien reaction fire. Got him. Came from right there though. I saw it. So what I can do, I got a grenade in my belt. Go ahead and take my grenade. Prime it to zero so it blows up as soon as I end my turn. Can't throw there. Come on. Throw it somewhere. Just roll that shit, man. Come on. There we go. Oof. I threw it. I think it landed right there. Hopefully. Oh, fuck. It didn't. It bounced off the wall. Ah, oh, okay. Well, at least I know where the aliens are. Lost two soldiers. Bravery's already down to 60. People are going to start panicking if I continue to lose soldiers. Kind of in bad shape. But this is how it. Uh, this is how it works in the beginning of the game. You know, you get you get toward an alien ship, and they just get gunned down, blown up, friendly fire all over the place. Let's try a slightly different approach. Let's breach the front door. This guy's got a big gun. Yeah, they're still over there. Let's see if I can. Uh, Hug a grenade way over there. Maybe I can get lucky. Out of range. Out of range. Can't throw there. Eh, throw it. Landed right where I told you to put it, but I don't think it's close enough to really do anything except decimate that corpse. Uh, which, speaking of which, 
Uh, that grenade will blow up any equipment nearby. So at the end of the mission, we can't salvage any of it. That's all gone. Ooh, there he is. Shot at you, buddy. You just gonna take that? You okay with that? You alright with just being shot at? I don't know. Kneel behind some of that coral there. Alright, the alien sees us. The alien knows we're coming. I'm gonna have Stuart here go way wide around. Let's see if I can move around to the front door. This is taking a a little bit longer than I originally wanted it to. I was hoping it'd be just a quick, uh, quick win or a quick loss, so I could show you how end of the mission is. Oop! Throwing grenade, and we got rookies panicking. All right, I'm just gonna call it a loss here. Notice they panicked. Zero time units left, so they're just sitting ducks. Horrible. They're probably gonna die next, but. We got three dudes in the ship, so let's just abort mission. Yeah, there's three in the ship, two outside. Let's get the fuck out of there. We're losing our men. People are panicking already. End of the mission. Whether we win or lose, it gives me a quick rundown of everything. Alien sub was not recovered because we aborted. That's unfortunate. So we didn't get to loot any of the stuff inside. If we won, everything that's laying on the floor, we automatically loot. Parts of the ship, we automatically loot and bring home. Uh, but we didn't win. We ended up aborting, so we uh, we cut our losses. Lost three guys, took a score penalty. Two guys were missing, because those were the two guys that panicked out in the field. We just left them. They're probably dead. Um, there's a score deduction. Total, minus 100 points. That's a poor rating. That's going to affect us at the end of the month. Not enough equipment to fully re-equip, because some of that stuff was just blown to smithereens out in the field. Fair enough. Fair enough. There's our ship heading home. So yeah, we only those are the three guys left. No rank ups, no level ups or anything like that. It sucked when you lose, but it could have been a lot worse. I could have lost my Triton. I would have had to buy another Triton for five hundred thousand dollars. Ooh, it's expensive. I'll just quickly head to the end of the month. Uh oh, port attack. Ooh. Oh, those are nasty. Especially on the first mission of Port Attack. Ugh. Yeah, you'll see one of those uh, in a few videos. Something like that usually happens monthly. Those are really bad to ignore. Ugh. Minus almost a thousand monthly rating. Ugh. Minus a hundred for that first mission. Minus, uh, what, probably... 800 or so maybe for that uh, ignored port attack and then all those subs that had escaped the ones that were touched down that I tried to intercept but I missed they escaped that affected me too um, but 994 that's kind of a weird number it does give me a little bit of credit for doing something um, I did shoot down at a USO and I did research a couple things so I got credit for that but not enough to counteract me completely ignoring a mission and letting some USOs go. People don't like that. Uh, in specific, all these people in this paragraph don't like that. And because they don't like that, they reduce their funding. Keep in mind, we are an organization. We need money. And uh, the world is providing us with that money. So if the world's not happy, they're going to cut funding. So funding changed because of the poor rating. Uh, minus almost 700000 And that is per month generally dissatisfied gotta improve it or risk termination if I do poorly next month then we're fucked and it's game over we lost but I'll quickly go to funding Ugh. negative change New Mexico is the only country that doesn't really give a shit they're still giving us 367,000 per month but in total we're making 5.3 million seems like a lot but Let's head into the bases here. Base information, I think. Monthly costs, yeah. Income, 5.3 million, but we spend about 2.7 million all the time, every month, just based on the Triton, the Barracuda, because we're paying lease on those, we don't actually own those, we're renting them. Uh, salaries for the people who work here, base maintenance based on the buildings I've got. This is only the beginning of the game, and I'm already spending almost 3 million. 
You can imagine how bad it is later on in the game. Multiple bases, full bases with a lot of researchers and technicians building stuff. Costs money to build stuff. I mean, it really adds up. So you gotta keep people happy. Because uh, you will run out of money if you're not careful. But in short, that's XCOM. There's a bunch of different types of missions out there. There's land missions, there's port attacks, base attacks, uh, artifact sites. Hopefully you get to see all of that stuff at some point in time during this playlist. So uh, I, I hope you stick around. Uh, starting next video, I'm just going to start a new game. And um, we'll go from there. Now, all the stuff that I just did is going to be erased. I'm not saving it. This is only for uh, tutorial type purposes, just so everybody knows what's going on, so nobody's just kind of thrown into the game. But, um, yeah, hopefully it'll be fun. Worst case, I get my ass kicked right away, and uh, I'll wait a little while, cry softly, and I'll start another one. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope this was informative, and I hope when I start this up, everybody's on track and knows what's going on. But until then, until then. <laughs>